Okay. So first, I need you guys to. Um, I'm going to provide you a link in the chat that will give you the st start out app, the blank app that I will be using for my demonstration. Tracing, tracing, um, so you can follow along. Yeah, that's what I have. So I'm pasting that now if you guys want to use that. Oh my gosh, the format came out the way it was in my. Well, in one second, having technical difficulties. Like my
Hello, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Sorry about that. So technical difficulties with my mic uh, on my computer. I'm not sure what was happening. It was coming through earlier pretty fun, pretty good. So. Um, so I will back up a little bit. Um, so for, so I went through these NPM commands that were necessary. Uh, NPM is the Node um, Node.js package manager that uh, allows us to use TypeScript and other, various other libraries. Um, I went through npm version install uh, install uh, TypeScript, and then I used TypeScript version to check that TypeScript was still around or installed. And then I used TSD note is where I'm at now. So um, this is we'll check to see if our uh, TypeScript file is being registered. So everybody hearing me now? Just want to <laughs> make sure before I go forward. Okay, great, awesome. Getting a bunch of yeses, so I'll go forward. So TSC note. Um, so caveat, like uh, there are there are tools in place that you won't always have to do this TSC note um, command. Uh, things like Webpack and um, if you're using like uh, libraries like Angular um, or React will run this for you to build your types, uh, build your JavaScript files. But if you run TSC note, it'll take a second to run. It doesn't really give you too much feedback. It just runs in the background. And you'll see it pops out a JS file. Obviously we have nothing in our TS file um, to populate this JS file. But what happens is it populate, you write your TS and then, um, build your JavaScript file using that TS file, uh, um, transpiler. Um, I simply include this JavaScript file in my markup right here as so. So script source notes.js. Um, and then that's the last time I should have touched my JavaScript file. So we'll just close that. But I may open up and in, in feature reference to show you as things build. So I'm going to write just a, a simple function real quick to show you it build with just a simple type. So I'll just say function uh, test, and then maybe we'll just have oh well, I'm not calling, and then say console dot log, and then string test. Okay, save that. And then run TSC note. And then it populates my JavaScript file. Obviously, the TypeScript that I put was the same as my valid JavaScript, so nothing much different there. Okay, so in, or, in order to see this, um, we would have to navigate to our index file um, locally. So I will open our index file and right now so if you go to if you go to the the file that i had you download earlier and go to index that will show our actual site so this is the index i built with that basic html um uh bootstrap and uh css um so if i open a console we'll see that our TypeScript did not run. Um, let's read. Oh, <laughs> so if I add function, I have to run function test. and refresh my page, we'll see that our console was logged, uh, test was logged to our console. So simple, uh, simple function, that's how it spits out the JS for us. So we're gonna do a little more with that. It's not gonna stay that simple. 
Okay, so here uh, today, tonight we're going to be building a simple notes app. So you see on the right hand side, you, see, you should see a to do's app um, kind of template here. Uh, that will be actually for a challenge that I have for you guys, but we're just going to build out a notes app. So in here, I would enter uh, a note and then add note, and it's going to show up below here. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to start with a simple function, function add note. Okay, so um, first I want to add a constant, which is an unchanging variable, uh, and I'm going to call it ul list. Um, and so the, the glory of TypeScript is that I can type this, this variable so that um, we have more information on what the variable whole is and can do. Um, and so that we avoid mistakes of calling functions that it doesn't contain or uh, passing it incorrectly correct into functions, other functions. So I'm going to call this an HTML uh, UL list element. And then, um, and then what I want to do is uh, I want to get my list element from the the DOM or from the document model. So what I'm doing here, so in order to make this a little easier, I'm just going to bring my pre-built code for you guys. So what I did here is I have my unordered list. Uh, constant. It's a type of UL, uh, HTML UL list element, um, and I'm getting the element by ID, which is notes list. We go to our HTML. We have notes list right here, which is this. Oh, that's wrong with notes list right here, which is the UL uh, un unordered list, and bring it into our TypeScript. Um, so right here, what I'm doing is I'm casting this um, get element by ID as a UL list, so I have so I know that it matches my type, which is UL list for this for this variable. The next thing I want to do is build a, a note element uh, or get the value from my input, which is a input element. So I created a constant notes entry uh, element, casted my get element by ID notes, which is my text box, which is right here, ID note, which is my input text box. And now I have the, the text box element in my TypeScript. Okay, so I'm going to take that text. I'm going to use that uh, unordered list element, that UL element. I'm going to append my a new. I need to append a new um, list item to that element, and I'm going to have. So I need to create a new list item. So I could say constant or let li equals document dot create element and then I want to make the element an li. So TypeScript will know normally in JavaScript you wouldn't know it wouldn't have any information about what this this element is but with TypeScript I can see here that my my element li or my variable li is html element and that exposes 
uh, different functions and different properties. So if I say li, I see all these functions and properties that in JavaScript we normally wouldn't have exposure to unless we looked them up in like a separate documentation or had some kind of library or linter that would tell us this. So I'm simply going to set the li text Inner text equal to test. So the other beauty about TypeScript is that this is looking for a li element, but if I was to put, say, if I was to create a um, new uh, div element, so if I call this div, I cannot pass that into yeah, this append child. It's going to show me an error because it's expecting um, it's expecting an li element, a, a list element. So that that's the beauty of TypeScript. So if you were in JavaScript and you're writing some code and you're writing really quickly, um, you could accidentally if if you needed if it required even if your function required a, a list element, you could still pass in a div element and it, or any other type, and it would still compile, but once you run it, it might come run into issues. So that won't work, so I need to pass in my list. And it says it's okay. So we'll save that, and we'll see my list populate. So it doesn't matter what I put in here because I set my list value to test. So it's always going to show test in my new list, notes list. So we need to fix that. Okay. So I created a create notes, create notes item function. I'll be posting that here real quick. Um, for right now, we are going to ignore this trash button because that's for future. And we are going to ignore that right there. So, in fact, I'm going to just take it out. And we make this a string. Okay. So now I have a function create new list element, uh, note item which takes in a parameter string and returns a uh, li element. Um, so now I can simply call this, so create notes item. Um, and it should uh, allow me to do that, but it's giving me a note that says um, expecting one argument. So an, another thing about TypeScript is that it checks to see that you have the proper arguments passed into your functions with the proper um, type. So if you were in JavaScript, I could put this in here, um, save the code, run the code, and it can run into errors because you're, you're not providing it the correct parameters. So I need to provide it a string. String test. Um, it will call my function create note element or item. Um, it creates a new list item. Uh, I will set that new list item dot inner text equal to note. So now note is a string. If I was to pass a boolean or pass any other type of value in here in JavaScript, it might not work correctly because I am expecting a string. But in TypeScript, we it, it's type strict, so it expects only only that string and it allows me to use it correctly in, it, in the function. So you can see how that can affect how well the code comes out um, prior to runtime. So if I save that, 
Yes, no. And I go back to my page, refresh. I could put something in there and it still logs my test. So still, still we're not completely there. We need to make this actually function with the notes that I'm taking out here. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna bring in uh, custom classes. So you can create interfaces that represent classes and objects in your TypeScript uh, project. So here I have a custom class called CodeStack Note. CodeStack Note has a property text, date, and priority. Uh, uh, text is a string, date is a date, and number is, or priority is a number. I'm going to remove this div, and I'm going to remove this this block of code because we don't need that. That's what create note is doing. And I'm going to create a new constant. Uh, called uh, note and make it a type of code stack note and make it equal to the values of code stack note. So note, it will say it's missing certain parameters. So code stack is providing, or code stack, TypeScript is providing me um, information on what is missing from my, my, my object. So it's saying that uh, we're missing the following properties date and priority. So I need to put those in there. So I'll make text equal to no element dot value. That will be my text. Oops, comma. Yeah, doing this wrong. There we go. And so if we left it at that, that's just one of the properties. It knows that we still need two more properties to, to go. So it keeps our objects correctly um, built so that when we use them throughout our application, uh, everything we need that we expected is there. So now I need date and priority. Date is new date. Oops. And priority will always be one because that's not really being. So priority one. So all my notes are super important. Now that I have a new code stack note object, uh, I'm, I'm, I need to use it. So I want this create note item to use my code stack note, but it can't yet because it's still, it's still expecting a string. So let's change that string to a code stack note. Okay, and then we have to clean up our code a little bit. And so here, on this line, I have, um, I'm setting my inner HTML of my list item that I just created here to a, to the values of my code stack note item, which note.text, note.date, note.priority. Um, here is a special syntax for TypeScript, which has, allows you to uh, inject your, your variable values straight into your string. So it's, uh, it's a dollar open bracket, close bracket, and your variable in between there. It allows you to eject, instead of using variable plus string, variable plus string with concatenation. So from there, let's save it. Check to see that there's no errors. So when it's running TSC, this TSC command, with note, it's actually check, uh, checking the TypeScript document for errors. So if I was to create an error, like making this a string again, and ran TSC note, didn't compile. Oh, I didn't save it. 
and save it <laughs> and run TSC note. It checks to see that and provides errors and information on what's wrong with my TypeScript before I even push it into my code uh, into uh, final production. Oops. So as it says here, um, argument type code stack note does not assign a little string, um, and note te text does not exist. So it's showing that these values do not exist in the current way the code is written. So I'm going to set it back. Save it. All errors clear up on my uh, all errors clear up on my code. Run TSD note again. So running TSD note just uh, does the transpiling and does the error checking for uh, for your TypeScript files. And I'll show you here that it's fitting all this out into JavaScript. So I'll open this up, refresh my page, put in my note, and it adds my note now. So there you go. You got a working note app. Well, I want to put a delete button because sometimes I don't like my notes. So if I have this, I want to be able to delete that. Let's go back to the code. And I have one more function called create trash button. So we're going to ignore this. Actually, I'm going to. Okay. So I need to call my create trash button. Okay, so right here I'm creating a uh, trash button element, which is a label element is what I'm using for my trash button uh, with several different styles I have in the back uh, in the CSS and calling create trash button, which returns none other than an HTML label element. Okay, and then when I get my trash button back, I would like to append it to my my notes element, which is my new list note item. I append child uh, trash button. Okay, so our trash button function has HTML label element as its return value. Uh, it does not have any parameter values. So if I was to pass any type of parameter, even a string, it's going to throw me an error because it's TypeScript and it knows that it doesn't accept expect any argument. Okay, I'm going to create a new level label element. One thing TypeScript can do is it, uh, it has implicit types so that it knows that because I have this label element um, parameter invoked here that it will type this label as an HTML label element. Um, HTML label element has properties like HTML4 trash, uh, which is a string that says what uh, describe, describes the, actually we don't really need that, but describes the, the for attribute value. Um, inner HTML, which describes the HTML that's within the value, and it says delete, make me work. <laughs> and then class list, and I added a custom class that I have on my CSS, which is delete button, which styles the class to, or styles the button, the label to look like a button. Okay, so a couple things we'll note here is that I'm having an error. It says cannot find code stack image. So code stack image is actually a, a custom class that has not been created yet. So we need to create it.
So I built a custom image class or a code stack image class here for us to use. Um, TypeScript al allows us uh, to create our custom classes, which um, provide us a constructor. So when the class is instantiated or created, um, it allows us to assign values. Uh, so we have our creator, our constructor parameters with source um, alt, which with is the number, uh, source and alt except string. And then I also have a function as part of this class um, for any new class uh, element or any new variable that object that matches this class can take advantage of. So to image element, which uh, spits out an image element um, and adds my constructor values to the element properties. So source, source equals this dot source, all equals this dot alt, width equals this dot width, and returns an image element. So how do we use that? So down here, I needed a new image element, a uh, code stack image, actually. Um, and so I said, image equals code stack image um, and invoked a new code stack image, which creates a new version of that, uh, that class and passed in the constructor parameters uh, 20 for the width, the picture icon location, trash icon location for the, for the source and trash for the alt tag. And then I pin that to my label, HTML label, with image dot to HTML or image element. So this converts that class into an image element for this child, a pin to pin, uh, for this label to pin as a child. And it has to be an image element. I couldn't do my code. If I just did my code stack image, it's not the right type to fit in that. And then I return the label. The last thing I need to do is append that label, that label that acts as my trash button to my new list item, as I do here. So let's see how that runs and looks. By running TSP note. Refresh, type in test, and there's my button. Type in test, test two, and there's my other button. So uh, I covered uh, a few concepts here, um, and that's, that's all I'm going to cover today. I want to give you guys a chance to mess with uh, TypeScript and build your own app. So I have a challenge for you. Um, so uh, so I'm just going to go over a little bit of what I covered. Um, I covered cu custom classes. So using interfaces, we can create object classes, uh, models that represent um, our object and have specific typed properties, which is one thing you can't do um, in JavaScript. Um, I also created a custom class, a uh, code stack image, with a constructor that uh, assigns these parameters upon instantiation and allows itself to be converted, converted to an image element via, uh, via this in, uh, to image element function. Um, we created our add notes function um, that adds our notes, uh, covered that we can cast certain elements or certain uh, certain values, uh, certain uh, variables as certain elements or certain types, excuse me, um, that we can use our model here with certain values. Um, and that is about it. So, uh, so my challenge for you guys today is 
I will put this on the screen for you. Uh, give me one moment. So, <clears throat> so take the code that I, I wrote just now during the demonstration and expand on it. Um, make this part into more than just a notes, um, notes app to a to-do app. Um, <clears throat> so use TypeScript, of course, because that's the main mission in this whole um, demonstration. Uh, make sure you have one custom interface. Uh, make sure you have one custom class with w at least one function and constructor. And uh, the user must be able to create their to-do item um, and add multiple new ones. Um, they must also be able to check off the, the list items, show that they've been finished. Um, and the stretch goal would be to be able to remove the items, make them editable, and make the delete button work on this side, because delete does not work. So um, thank you for listening to the TypeScript um, demonstration or the TypeScript session. Uh, I'm just gonna open now to any questions or anything people uh, need to be covered again. Uh, and you can put it in the chat window right now. Also. I'm also uh, going to be adding a tiny URL uh, to the chat window uh, in order that has the finished product that you can download. Not the finished product, the, the product up into what I showed tonight. And it's huge, so you're not going to miss that. Um, and then uh, at, at our GitHub uh, account for the CodeStack meetups, we also have uh, within the TypeScript folder, there's also the finished product if you guys get stuck. So I, I actually went ahead and finished the product with a full to-do list app and, um, and the delete button does remove the notes on the left-hand side. 